Is this live? Is this live? <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Rocky Series podcast, Going the Distance. Spoiler. Okay. This is spoiler-filled. If you have watched, if you have not watched uh, Creed, Creed 2, Rocky Balboa, don't watch this. If you haven't seen Rocky 5, don't watch this. If you've seen Rocky 5, bless you. <laughs> So, yeah, we can't emphasize this enough. Uh, if you don't care about spoilers, go ahead and watch this. This is all spoiler. This is all spoiler. Because we are gonna we have to review Creed 2 with spoilers. Because just saying it was a fun, great movie, though that's fun to say. Yeah, well, if, if you're in the middle of watching Creed to be prepared to watch Creed 2, Stallone lives. I mean, yes. Rocky lives. Well, let's just get right to it. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky doesn't die in this Rocky, film, folks. Rocky beats cancer. Yeah, he's a... Is Rocky officially a cancer <laughs> survivor? So, 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 so. No, I think he'll be five years in. Okay. So he's just in remission. Okay, so Rocky's in cancer remission. There's really no indication in the film that he is suffering from cancer. He, his hair was a little bit matty and gray. Did you notice that? It was thin? Yeah, I think that's just Stallone's natural. Maybe. It was grayer. Well, yeah, he's a 72-year-old man. He Italians don't get gray hair. Yes, they do. He's so, dyed his hair. Okay, so Creed 2. Before we start talking about Creed 2, or before we talk about our viewing experience, Ruben, why don't you talk about your expectations where you will never watch a trailer, okay? Never saw a commercial. Uh, I just knew that Drago was in it. Um, any type of expectation I had was not met. Okay, Here, here's a... Do you want to hear some theories that I have? I, I don't know what uh, what you want to hear. But well, I, I, I saw so many. I was just curious. First, I'll ask. I was oh, curious. Sure. Did you think it was going to be better than Creed One? Like, what was your actual hope, or did you go in totally like I have no expectations? I didn't have any expectations of. I knew it was going to be good. Okay. I yeah. was confident it was going to be good too. Like I was confident that it was going to be good, and I did watch all the trailers, the featurettes. I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. Um, and from what I saw. It was going to be good, and yeah, it was. Yeah, I here the only that I watched was behind the scene type Keep of talking. Things. I got to share this on Twitter. Keep talking. I, I'll talk. Okay. All the workout videos that I saw Dolph Lundgren do, right, made me think that he and Stallone were going to fight. I thought this was going to be some type of little brouhaha, right? Of we got some unfinished business or something along those lines. So. I kept on waiting for that to happen. It didn't happen. He was just working out just because he's going to be on screen. And millions of people are going to watch him. Yeah, so Ruben, you bring up... So this is where Ruben's, I want to say, nativity comes in. But this is you not knowing the stuff that was shown in trailers. So there was an 18-minute YouTube behind-the-scenes leak. 18, 18 minutes. minutes. Now, I will say... too long. It's, yeah, it wasn't a trailer. I, no, it wasn't a trailer, Ruben. Yeah. I, what it was was behind-the-scenes footage of the recording. So there was, like, set pieces, some of the dialogue, you know, stand over here and things like that. But there was a scene that was filmed uh, of Rocky and Drago fighting in the hospital lobby. What? Yes. So now that you've seen the film, I'll send you the link because you can watch this. So there was footage filmed of uh -huh. Stallone and Dolph. There's, you know, it's kind of a fun little scene to watch. They're laughing and talking, and then they go into the fight sequence. And there's just a quick little couple punches with each other. Uh, it was in the hospital scene after Adonis loses his first fight against Victor Drago. Rocky leaves the hospital. He goes to the lobby. But in the movie, he just walks out of the hospital. But here in this in these deleted scenes, he, he and Drago go... So tell me. So this is the question I have for you now. Now you know the scene in that movie. Yeah. Do you think they did the right thing by cutting that fight? They probably did. My guess it didn't. I guess the punches didn't land. Yeah, the punches didn't land. All right, I, I agree. People, I've uh, people who have already commented on Creed Two online who have said, "Oh, they cut out the fight sequence. They cut out the fight sequence between Drake." That's why I don't watch these things. I have no expectations. That's right. My response to them has always has been since I've seen the movie is they did the right thing. Because Rocky leaving the hospital, feeling remorseful about Adonis's injuries, the what he what he went through, I think it was more poignant for him just to leave. I think it would have been kind of wrecked. Like Drago, what are you doing here? I, I, like I don't understand what Drago was doing at the hospital. Yeah. No, maybe because his son never even got injured in that first fight. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So the, the opening sequence has the Dragos. Mm -hmm. I loved, loved it. Yeah, loved it. Okay, can we just say loved it? Can we just say that this is Creed two redemption story for everyone involved? Yeah, absolutely. Minus uh, uh, oh dang it, what's her name? Bianca? No, is that her name? Br Bridget Nielsen's. Uh... Oh, Bridget Nielsen. No, yeah. Okay, we'll get that. Okay, so the op the opening the movie opens with the Dragos at in their apartment or home in Russia. Excuse me, in the Ukraine. Ukraine, yeah. Yeah, uh, Ruben and I are both court Ukrainian, so we're part Drago. And uh, anyway, so they're they're in the uh, they're in their like home or whatever, and they do this like early morning training, and you can tell that though they. They're living together and they're training together. There doesn't seem to be a real connection between father and son. No, it seemed like they were united in their desperation to make a go of life. Maybe also united in their anger. So I'm just gonna I just gotta put this on our Twitter. Yeah, that's what you're saying. T it tweet, takes it tweet away. All right, here we go. Okay. So welcome you, everyone you, who's you joined get, the show. You get a lot of uh, Twitter tw Twitter. So Ruben. Ruben has allowed me to handle all of the social media aspects of the Rocky Series podcast. Do I have a choice? You can you 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 have the password to all of our accounts. I guess I do. I guess I do. You feel free but, to tweet. But, but do you do? Yeah, we get that. We have almost eight hundred followers on Twitter. Wow, really? Yeah, and they interact. And there's people who have been waiting for the link to join in a, the conversation or say hi. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Okay. Hey, uh, spoiler. People joining yeah. in, the numbers are going up. Yeah, spoiler. Spoiler. This okay. is all spoiler for Creed 11. Creed 11. I never saw one through, I, I mean, two through uh, ten. So, yeah, we, we don't know how to do graphics. <laughs> so, this is how we do graphics on the Rocky Series podcast. We're channeling our, our inner uh, Wayne's World? Drago. That's right. So, how cool was the opening sequence of the Dragos? Loved it. Loved it. Loved it was it. like Loved three, it. four minutes long. Very little dialogue. I think he just told him to wake up. And give him a punch. Yeah, give him a little. That's yes, right, a little punch in the shoulder to wake up. That's right. Yeah, it wasn't a friendly punch. No, it wasn't the type of punch like, that hey. that you would give your sons. No, this is this was a hard punch to wake <laughs> up uh, Victor. And I loved it when they were done the little beginning part. And it was the beginning? See, I'm already fading out here, or forgetting some things. The beginning showed him fighting too, didn't it? Uh, perhaps. Well, yeah, but, th but when he saw his original fights. Yeah, so I loved how they faded the Creed two, and the Creed two fills the screen in that orchestra, Ooh, and it just that ominous like, oh man. So I'm not gonna go. We're not gonna go point by point because I'm gonna forget the order of things. So I think it might be easier, Ruben, if we just talk about things that we liked. So, sure. So pick something. Pick something that you liked. Uh, I, I well, I'm gonna start with what I don't like. No, 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 no. No, this the, no, don't, it's related. It's related. It's really okay. 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 Uh, I don't like the occupation of uh, Creed's. Uh, is it Bianca? Okay. Well. Okay. Let's talk about the worst part of the whole film. Fine. You. You want to talk about? Let's. <laughs> yeah. The worst part of Creed Part One <laughs> and the worst part about Creed Part Two is her, Bianca. She's, no, she's a great character. Her singing career. I don't want to hear these fake songs. <laughs> I'm not joining you on this journey. Of the soulful, what what style of music is this? Uh, it doesn't exist. That, that's it's, no no. My uh, twenty year old son, who's a little bit more hip to what's kind of maybe popular, he said this music is legit genre. So if any of our listeners or anyone who knows what Bianca is singing, but it's this weird ethereal. The beat doesn't quite have a beat. Uh, and it, it, okay. So you see, you see Adonis up there in the balcony watching his wife sing, and you know he's like digging it. And I'm like, would you really be a fan? That, I mean, that just shows what a great actor Michael B. Jordan is. I will say that I wish I was deaf like their baby, <laughs> if I had their mom singing like that. Oh, it's just, <laughs> it was, uh, anyways. No, no, no. no it's, but but but, uh, but this was for me to tell me you tell you what I liked. But before you get there, I'm not done talking about Bianca because about the singing storyline because it's the weakest part of the movie. Easy. Her career wanted if she wanted to be a painter, a bricklayer, a computer nerd, any other career would have been less annoying to watch her do. Because let me just say, I saw the a movie of Star is Born. This won't be any spoilers for this movie, but I saw the movie Star is Born. Uh -huh. All the music for the most recent version was originally written for this film. For the film A Star is yeah. Born. 
the music was incredible. It was legitimately like you almost felt like you're watching like a documentary of a real songs that have been uh-huh. made. You were listening to each song, thinking, "I've heard that. Not that I've heard this before, but this this is something I like right away." They knew how to it, write. It, a, it connected. It resonated. It was as real art. Yeah. So the uh, these songs, I don't understand how they can you can get these people. They can't put one cat. How hard is it just to do a pop song? Just make it sound poppy. I don't care. Make it sound like a Spice Girl song. Something that sounds like it's. It has a beat that you can almost dance to, but it's that weird. I, anyways, that's okay. Go now. What did you like about this? I thought they helped solidify their relationship. It, it's, a different, yes. it's, a, it's a different relationship than Adrian and Rock, but they did it. Their relationship in this movie was really good. I will. Say, I was teary eyed yeah. for the first like half the movie with 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 their relationship. So the biggest question people have is: Is this better than Creed One? I, I, I don't look at it that way. To me, it's just there's the character Rocky. He has side character in his life. One of them's Creed. I enjoy his journey. Okay, I will say this is better. If I had to rate it, I, I would put this into the rating of the other eight films. I haven't quite put my rankings yet together, but I will say I think this now sits for me at number three. I think it goes Rocky 1, mm-hmm. uh, Rocky 4, and then Creed 2. Rocky... Rocky Balboa. Sure. And then <sighs> Creed 1 or 2. Okay. So for you, they're almost on par with each other. What what yeah. I what I liked about this as well, loved about this, is Michael B. Jordan. It wasn't, I don't know if it was his acting in part one or his character or a bit of both. It was hard for me to get on board with him a little bit. Like it was hard for me to even like him in part one. Oh, really? Yeah, it was. It was difficult. When I left the theater, it wasn't that I hated him, but I was like, ah, because I love Rocky so much. Oh. I felt like when I saw part one, I felt like everything in part one was made saved by Rocky's presence. I oh, felt like every yeah, every yeah. time they left the story of Rocky and they went to the Bianca Adonis, this is for Creed One. Sure. I was not as interested, not as sold. But I think if I go back and watch part one, knowing that where they end up, I might like it better. Okay. But in part two, I legitimately enjoyed the scenes of Bianca. And Adonis much more than it in part one. I, I could watch a Creed three without Sloan being in it. That's just it. They have established the characters of Adonis and, and yeah. Bianca enough that I could watch a Creed three now without yeah. Rocky. I could do it. So Sal here uh, says on Facebook, yes, better than Creed one. So we got one one person agrees with me that it is better than Creed one. I, 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 I got to watch, watch them again. I've only seen Creed one once. Again, if those are joining. Spoiler, spoiler. This is all spoiler. So the uh, what else I liked about uh, Creed and uh, Adonis and Bianca? Bianca should do all all of her songs should be Creed covers. <laughs> the band Creed. The band Creed. Imagine if she did a Creed cover <laughs> on stage. I would have enjoyed that more than oh, the songs that she played. Can you take me higher? That's what she should have sang as she walked him out. Okay, that was the worst part of the movie. That was the worst part of the movie. Oh my. God. Gosh. Who, okay, and I love Sly, but I will say he wrote this film and he saved the characters in this film and he did an amazing job in this film. But at, he also had a couple of writers with him, so I'm going to give Sly the benefit of the doubt that whoever he had writing with him on this, that was their idea, not his. I can see why they think it would work, but it would have to work on the premise that her music songs was good or was popular. Good. Yeah, yeah. Or she was popular. Or so, yeah, or she was. She wasn't famous. Okay. She's not. Fa- she has a couple like one night shows at clubs or whatever. What you know, yeah, this yeah. night only exclusive Bianca. You know, sure, she's sure. got a little bit of a following. Sure, we had a friend that would do that. Okay, so no, no I'm not trying to knock her. No, I. Well, you're right. I'm just saying we go support the friend. That's right. Yeah. I'm... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you offline. Sorry. Uh, Maybe it's a different friend. Yeah, it could very well be. So with Bianca, this is now the final fight, last part of the movie. Mm-hmm. Creed's entrance comes in. There's this like white light that goes across the ring, yeah, the and it goes thing. down, and a spotlight comes down. And I thought that it was going to be a spotlight on Adonis. It was a spotlight on on Bianca with a microphone. It seems like a lot of theatrics that would take place in another country. There's no way Russia would allow this. There's no way, like this is in Russia. Why would they say, "Yeah, we'll set this up for Bianca's entrance"? It's weird that this was set up, and she came out singing, and the song was even on like. It would have been better if it had been Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas, you know, <laughs> some sort of pump up song, some sort of like "Lose Yourself." Eminem comes out doing "Lose Yourself." Now, I will say what they could have done to make it less annoying 
and it still would have been annoying had it been a Bianca song. <laughs> this is turning into a Bianca episode. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. And I'll end it on this. Is the episode? No, or? this is Bianca talk. Oh, okay. Um, is that if it was just her song playing over the speakers, fine. Uh-huh. And she was walking with Adonis arm in arm. Uh huh. That would have been less, you know. She's walking with her husband to the ring, showing her support. Uh-huh. They're together as a team, husband-wife team. It's her song playing, their entrance, fine, fair enough. But her singing it was terrible. Yeah. Anyways, I, I, I liked um, that Mrs. Huxtable didn't talk anything about her husband being in jail. Yeah, Mrs. Huxtable really did a good job avoiding any kind of Dr. Huxtable. <laughs> she was great in this film. She's a great actress. I thought she well not a great actress, but I've enjoyed her in the Creed films. I've enjoyed her in everything I've seen her in. Yeah, she's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, and she's aged well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how old is she? Like is she, I don't know. She must be in her seventies as well, because she was in the Cosby show in the eighties, playing the f- married mother of how many kids? I don't know. Ruby's gonna Google that. So Fel- Felicia Rashad, am I saying that right off the top of my head? Felicia Rashad? We'll have to have her on the show to find out. Yes, we'll have her on the show. So Felicia, if you're listening, please join us. So if she was oh, great. I got a call coming in. Oh, okay. Don't answer that now. That's for it's for Sheeta. Oh, what's your name, Rashida? Fl- no, Felicia Rashad, I believe. That's what I said. Okay. So she was a really good in this, uh, and I, I'm glad that they fleshed out her character more. Like we got to see a lot more of her in this film. I liked what she said about his decisions. You're a grown man. Yeah, you're a grown man. What do you want me to say? You know, sometimes when you hear of like overbearing parents, which we don't have. No, for the record. Yeah, mom, you're listening. Um, of like, yeah, if that's if that's your choice, then that's what you're gonna do, right? Yeah, both Ruben and I have uh, children. I have adult children, if you can believe it. And uh, I've already told them, like, you know, I can give you advice, I can give you my insights, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. I just don't want them to never say, "Dad, you never told me X, Y, Z could happen." So I try to do all that I can to share my life experience, but they have to make their own choices. Um, oh, I was gonna say about uh, shoot. Okay, let's talk about. Let's talk about Big Nasty. Oh, how do you say his name? Go back to him. Florian. Florian. I don't know how to say his last name. Montano. Flor- Montano. Yeah. So Big Nasty Florian Montano. The trailers and the setup before this film came out was going to be a little bit of... I thought he was going to be like an a-hole, but he's not. This is a guy just trying to make a living. In fact, he's trying to prove himself. I found myself really liking him and actually feeling bad for him before he even got in the ring. Because in, in the same way that Drago Sr. was used as a puppet and kind of as a, a tool for the Russian government, he was, you know, it's, it's kind of cliche, but he had the father dragging his son through his missed opportunities. And he was using his son to say, you know, we got to get our family back. We got to get our legacy back. We have to get our country back. And you're the one that's going to do this. All this was on his shoulders, uh, on uh, Victor Drago's shoulders. And so even right away, we kind of felt, Kind of felt bad for him. He, he's jogging beside his dad in the truck. I thought Drago Sr. was going to run him over in the truck. Do you think he was going to hit him with the truck? Or I thought maybe there would be a bump. Yeah. Hey, I want to make a few shout-outs here on Facebook. Uh, Sal uh, said I wanted the Russian crowd to boo more like in Rocky IV. So Sal says, yeah. I, they did boo, but maybe it's 2018 that they didn't boo crazy like they did in, in the 80s. It was a little bit more respectful even for Russia. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Anymore. I like uh, Randy uh, says, I got to work on this set of Creed 2. Awesome. Wild. So Randy, tell us uh, what part you're in and what you worked on. And uh, he says it was an exciting experience and all the top stars were so nice. Speaking of which top star, Rashid uh, Felicity. Felicity, Felicity Rashid. She's 70 years old. 70. She looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, Bob O'Rourke. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Faithful listener. Yeah. The sad. Um, yeah, sorry, old, Bob. Sorry that you listened to our show. Luda Milla. Oh, my gosh. Okay, wait. wait. Oh, okay. So, uh, hey, guys. Yeah, the story with the Dragos was sad. Yeah, it was really sad. And uh, I, I feel for him. Yeah. I know. So, he, uh, Bob brings up it, a point. There, that was going to bring up this film. There's people like that, though. This was an incredible part of the okay, game. I don't want to talk about the end just yet, but we'll talk about La Milla at the end. I don't want to talk about the fight at the end just yet. But uh, obviously, the last fight, the tables turn for uh, Victor Drago. He starts to, you can see in the match, he's going to lose. Mm-hmm. We see as an audience, the audience of Russia sees it. So she leaves, says, I'm not even going to watch the end of this fight. And Drago sees LaMilla leave. And you felt, I had, my, I was sold by Dolph Lundgren's acting, by oh, the yeah, writing yeah, yeah, of yeah. Sloan. I was Team Drago. 
not even but by the, I really like these guys. Like even when Drago's saying you got to break them, you got to look. It's a fight. It's like, that's what, what you have to do. Yeah, it's not going to be hey, go easy on them in the boxing ring. Like you're going to say, you know, go to him, yeah. stick it to him, whatever it is. Hey, our brother just joined. Um, Jason, what up? So at the end, Jason, this is a spoiler filled. Uh, Jason, our brother. Yeah, Jason, if you haven't seen this, it's off. this is a spoiler in the movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Bob, when Lamilla walked out, that was uh. But when she walked in at the dinner scene, the crowd, I heard the like murmurings in the crowd. Is that her? Is that her? Is that speaking of the crowd? The guy behind us? Okay, can we just, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and talk about that. Etiquette, people. If you or your kid or your, whoever you're with is chatting, tell them to shut up. Yeah. Shut they up. were a Spanish couple, which doesn't matter, but it kind of made it, I don't know if it's more or less annoying because I didn't understand what they were saying. Actually, I don't think they were Spanish. I swear they were speaking a different well, language, maybe. I Whatever, whatever the language doesn't matter. Okay. But. But they were laughing, and they weren't laughing at the movie. They were laughing at whatever conversations, because they were laughing at things that wasn't. There was funny. They were stuff. acting like they were in their living room. Yes, you're not in their living room. You know how like you notice how nobody else is having a, a conversation. I know. And of course, we sit. We sit, we have to sit in front of the people. Who who I does this? I don't know these yeah. people. Anyways, but yeah, when Ludmilla, Ludmilla, that's what I said. Okay. Uh, when she walked in the room, I was like, oh my gosh, she looks great too. She's 56, 58. Do you really think she looks great? No, but <laughs> well, she doesn't look terrible. She just it's I mean that's it doesn't matter. He, he, I, she's she's a tall, strong looking woman. She's a strong looking woman. She's very uh, I got this. It's just about a lost connection here, guys. Just stand by. Anyways, so that's <laughs> that's the reason why uh the guy uh, dumped uh, water on everybody. That's the reason why. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is part two, the Creed 2 spoiler field review part two. We had technical difficulties on our spoiler. last one. Spoiler. We have, anyways, we should be fine on this one. So come on in and join part two. Uh, <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody will. Nobody, nobody will. Rejoin. Okay. Where were we at? We were talking about LaMille leaving. We we're talking about how she looked. <laughs> Maybe it's better that we. No, no, no. I, I'm not trying to dog on her. Okay. Uh, she went for a very rough look in the movie i think it was like i wasn't saying she's a dog or something ridiculous like that I, I'm, oh, just, I'm just saying she, she had just a, tough, a tough demeanor oh okay she's she not inviting right this is this is um no thank you yeah so i thought she did a great job of acting i thought she delivered a line well i'm glad she was in the movie so the movie starts off with adonis winning the belt right off the right off right off the belt right off the Right off the back. Right off the bat? Oh, okay. So Donuts wins the belt right at the beginning of the film, uh -huh. which I kind of knew they were going to do, and I think that's a smart thing to do. He he wins the belt. He starts to enjoy his championship lifestyle a little bit. You already kind of see him, you know, embracing being champion. He certainly has his father's bravado, which I like. Uh, you know, and then we see the, 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 the promoter going out to Russia to grab Victor Drago. And then we know what's going to, we will, we, you know, it's, it's, it's not a brain surgery movie. We know what's coming. Yeah. But then the scene that we all were waiting for though, I was waiting for is when Adonis goes to Rocky's house to say, Hey, I want to fight this guy. And that whole sequence we saw on the trailer, but we get to see the whole dialogue drawn out and it was good. It was, it was like to watch Rocky say like, no, this guy's dangerous. He was raised in hate. I'm dangerous. Yeah. And you could even see Adonis as he was saying this to Rocky. Yeah. I wasn't – this shows a good acting. Like he, he's such a good actor. Like, you could tell that he's saying that he's dangerous. But he didn't believe He him. didn't even believe it himself. Yeah. You could almost sense that as he's trying to convince Rocky, hey, I'm dangerous too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the casting of – here's what worries me about casting of Michael B. Jordan. Okay. He's so good. Is he gonna stay with the, with it? Can you elaborate. I'm well, kind of like you know, like if if you were in NSYNC and you're not Justin Timberlake, you're gonna go, yeah, he's gonna go elsewhere, right? You know what I mean? He's he's uh, such a good actor, such a good actor. He did not not that you need to be a bad actor to be in the Rocky films, but he's just so good, like. He want he was hungry for the role to have Creed, right? But then a star power. Has so his, his star power has risen. Yeah, is he is 
Is he going to do a Creed 3? I, 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 I hope he does Creed 8. So that's the question. So let's jump to that question. Do we get and do we want a Creed Part 3? What about a Drago movie? Ooh. I would watch that. After seeing these two, who here would see a Drago movie? Yes. Aye, aye. I would definitely. I was put my hand up to say That's that. Why I, oh. Because it was backwards oh, okay. on the screen. I wasn't able to do a proper no, but, high five. No, I wasn't giving you a high five. I was put my hand up to say that. I will. I oh. will like to see. Oh. Oh. Does this hold hands for the rest of the podcast? Yeah, I would see a Drago movie. I was going to tweet out this uh, part two. Who here would see a Ludmilla? No. Not a Ludmilla movie. No? No. Who here would watch uh, Felicity versus the thing about Richard. the thing about a Drago movie? Unfortunately, um, is he such a he's such a beast? Uh, what kind of beast would he be fighting? The subtitles. That that get annoying. I don't. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I don't think they're going to do a Drago movie. If they did a Creed Part Three, it would be kind of interesting if they kind of shadowed or drew from the Rocky Three idea of somehow Drago and Creed are working together. Somehow, but I don't know if they could be friends. I don't, there's no point in having them fight again. That that that's irrelevant. They shouldn't do that at all. Uh, there's been some stupid rumors on the internet that would be a clever Lang Junior coming. No. Uh, <laughs> this is somebody to be a good troll. I know. Good, good for them. Yeah. Sure. Why don't we just have a, a, a Tommy Machine Gun? You, you junior. know, Mr. T right now. I was like, well, yeah. Okay. What else can we spoil here, Ruben? The, so let's talk about the middle fight. Of course, the first fight between Victor. And Adonis, the fighting sequences were great. You felt the impact. Mm -hmm. You felt the danger. Mm -hmm. uh, when when Adonis goes on his knee, and Victor comes out and punches him Pow. while he's on his knee, which we of course we find out is illegal and disqualify yeah. him. Which answers my question because I watched the trailer over and over again. I noticed that there was two fights, and I noticed that both times as Adonis came out with the belt. So I'm like, how does he retain the belt? Uh huh. Why does he fight him twice? I thought maybe the first fight was an exhibition fight, maybe, or something that was never about the belt. But it turns out it was to fight the belt. So when I'm watching this movie, I'm like, oh, he is fighting for the belt right away. So I, how does he have it in the second fight? So he punches him. Uh -huh. And when he, as a viewer, we both went, whoa. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it comes out of nowhere. There's no slow motion. That's what I like about this fight. Very little slow motion. There's a little bit. Mm -hmm. When that punch came in, because you see how big this dude is. And you, and you, so we're like, we're putting ourselves in that He's situation. Big dude. If like, what would that feel like? And the damage that uh, Creed Adonis went through, uh, his broken ribs, his broken, basically had a broken face. Um, yeah. Yeah. So swan, swan. fast forward, we don't have to go through the whole how it resolved or how Rocky and him get, because Rocky wasn't in the corner. So much like Mickey wasn't in Rocky's corner for part three because he was dying in the locker room. Quitter. Yeah, uh, that's the kind of the, what they drew from here is that, you know Rocky's not in his corner because he doesn't agree with the fight, he doesn't agree that this should happen, he doesn't want to be there when it happens. So the training montage in this film, what's your thoughts on that, real quick? For the second or for the re well, recovery? No, or... no uh, the training montage when Rocky and Adonis are now together. They're in the desert. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, you have to go hardcore. You got to go back to basics. But you know what they were doing? It, it didn't dawn on me quite. And it should have, but I wasn't quite catching on. They were teaching him pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I know, but it, it dawned on me. Like, what's the after? Oh, they're like, why when are they he, so hard on him? He fell down. Yeah. As like him getting back up. That's the foreshadow of him getting back up later. Yeah. Because Sly knew or Rock knew that if he doesn't get up now, he's not going to get up there. That's right. You got the eye of the tiger. Eye of the tiger, man. Yeah. Yeah, when he was when he was running the street, collapsed in the street, and I love how Rocky's like, get up, you know, get up. Just like Mickey was telling Rocky, get up, you son of a bitch, because Mickey loves you. And that yeah. was the Rocky was saying, get up, you know, get he's that angel on the shoulder. Even sure. though it was the car, it was an angel in the Mustang looking over his shoulder mm -hmm. and he, he got up. I just oh man. And the music, the swell that that pounding drum type of music in the train. I thought the music was great. I know there's been some uh, criticism on the music. I thought the music oh, fit. Was good. It was like uh, there was some like online criticism why Vince DiCola maybe wasn't asked to come back for part two of Rocky Four, so to speak. It's a different time. It's 2018. It, it, the music for this movie was was great. It'd have been better if uh, 
Robert uh, Tepper was. I think Robert Tepper should have been there for No Easy Way yeah, Out. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, well, he's uh, now dabbling in rap to slow it for Creed 3. No Easy yeah. Robert Tepper rap. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, Robert Tepper, if you're listening to us, do a rap, please. Um, lastly, let's talk about the fight at the end, and then we'll wrap this up because Ruben's got to go. This is just a quick, quick review. Um, we're going to dive deeper into this film, much more so in uh, Going the Distance, the Rocky Series podcast, season eight. <laughs> right yeah. now, we're on season four. Yeah. So, we will do a deep dive in this film. Uh, so, the rematch happens in Russia. The opening, uh, uh, when Victor comes out to the ring, it was awesome. I love that sequence. When Adonis came out to the ring, we talked about before, horrible with Bianca singing. The fight was amazing. Both fighters go down. And we see a mini story kind of happening with Victor Drago of his own going the distance. Mm. That he's fighting his fight. That he, uh, there was some point during the, the last match that he stopped fighting for his dad. Stopped fighting for his country. He started to fight for himself. And when he got knocked down, he got up twice too. Even as the viewers were like, he got up again. Yeah, yeah. So when he got up the second time, you could tell that he was broken. You could tell that he was beaten. And Adonis had broken ribs and he was beaten. And this is, guys, this is the part of the film where we get choked. I got choked up. I, I'm going to have a hard time not even choking up now. Because something happened at the end of this film that, Ruben, did you see this coming? Which part? What you just said right Drago, now? Drago, what he does. Drago Jr., a, a senior. When he threw in the towel. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I did That's his son. Yes. It, w- it went, it went, yeah, oh. it, yeah. It was oh. like, so can we just say bravo to Sly for writing that? Yeah. That, because it's ironic, because he asked Adonis, do you want to go this final round? Like, do you want to stop the fight? Adonis like, no, even though he's like broken ribs inside, bleeding inside himself. And Rocky's like, I didn't think so. You know, you're an adult. This is your fight. Yeah. I, I, you're you're like your dad. Okay. So he goes in to face Victor Dra- uh, Dra- uh, Victor Drago. Victor Drago gets knocked down, and he looks broken and beat. He comes up like, and he's like, I refuse to get knocked down. And he, and so then Adonis comes in and starts beating on him. And there was a small microsecond of a time as a viewer, I was like, holy. I'm kind of feeling bad for Drago. Well, that's what that's, there's a great balance between cheering, understanding the character of Adonis, and then understanding the character of the the Dragos. Yeah, it was balanced. Like, yeah, nobody it, was made out to be a bad. No, guy. no one was ultimately a bad. Guy. Like there was bad blood. There was bad. Feelings. But nobody's a bad person no. because they're you know you're Russian, therefore I hate you. It was just like you're my competitor. So Drago sees his son getting pulverized, and he sees the pride that he actually put into his son. Mm-hmm. You know, it was Drago Sr. that told his son, you can't quit. You will never quit. So his son's like, I won't quit. I'll never quit. Boom, boom, boom. And the Drago throws in the towel, something that Rocky couldn't do for his friend in part four. Drago does for his son. And they go over, and he hugs his son. As first, Drago's pushing him away, Drago Jr. Mm-hmm. And Drago Sr. is like, no, I'm, oh, yeah. I, I, I love you. I know it's okay. I'm actually really comforting you. Yeah. It was nice. It, it was, was oh. very, very nice. And then the end scene of the Dragos, they're jogging together. And I was like, so we see that. You know, we see them jogging together. Then we see Rocky uh, go home to see his uh, son, Robert, Robert yeah, Jr. Yeah, yeah, in Vancouver. And they break and they and they have have their family bond and oh okay when he says looks at his grandson he says you look like Adrian oh ah so I I he left it open and the last well the last the re- last resolution before we get there mm-hmm. was of course Creed goes to the grave site makes his peace with his father he now has made that peace you can tell it's yeah. all good it's all good in the hood. The peace has been made. He's introduced his childhood, you know, his grandfather. Everyone's like, if this is the final Rocky movie, all storylines have been tied. Yeah. And if there is going to be a third, there might be a cameo from Sly, and I think that might be about it. Cameo, that's it. Because I have two, I have two theories. Cree three happens. Cameo by Sly or Rocky, of course. Or Rocky dies off screen between the two films, or it's uh, a Star Is Born Bianca version. 
Ugh. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about really quick is the diner scene with Drago and, and Rock, Rocky meet at Adrian's diner. Oh, great, man. great. Just uh, that I won't necessarily spoil. I'm just saying that's great. The and dialogue, then, and then when because uh, we the, see the pain, we see the pain yeah. of Drago, what he's dealt with for 33 years, and both men have had loss of family, friends, money, spouse, spouses. So really, these are just equal parts of the same coin. They're different sides of the same coin. Yeah. They both have their journey of 33 years of pain and disappointment and lost yeah. family. It's it, it's amazing. Anyways, so Ruben, out of 10, what do you give this film? Um, I give it a 10. Okay. Wow. Well, why not? No, it's great. Like, I'm giving a 10 out of the the whole series. 10 out of enjoyment. Yeah, I, 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 I would it. give. I would give Creed one a 10 for enjoyment. Yeah, I would give Rocky Balboa, Rocky uh, one and two, and then three and four, like nine, eight, and then five. Thanks for coming along. All right. Sorry, I just want to make sure. I, I people are commenting on the old video. I just want them to know that we we're here. Part two's here. All right. Uh, but anyways. Thank you, everyone, for listening. So this is a part one of part two because we had some technical difficulties. Thank All you for spoiler. listening. All spoiler. We loved it. If you haven't seen it already, we actually haven't even spoiled the whole movie. You could go see this movie and just love it. It's an incredible journey. It's totally a Rocky film. I think I think Rocky is... In, <laughs> it's totally erotic. Yeah, it's totally a, erotic. It's an erotic, erotic Rocky film. It's a totally Rocky <laughs> film. Uh, I think Rocky might have been in this almost more than Creed Part 1, to be honest yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not very equal. Uh, it's a Rocky film. It's about it's Creed's story, and of course, at the end, when Rocky says it's your time, yeah, that's, and the the cameras yeah, on the, the back of him, like yeah. So, Ruben, with that, ding ding. Oh, how do we end this?